Well, praise the Lord. This is your friend, Brother Mike Holloway, and I'm coming on uh, just to do a real quick video. I wanted to uh, address a very popular passage of scripture, St. John chapter number six, verse 44, uh, as this verse is used uh, to defend the position that God is only drawing some men who he determined to save, only some men who he determined to save. He's not trying to save everybody, and therefore he's not drawing everybody. And St. John chapter number 6, 44 is often used to validate this belief. So without further ado, let's go to the scriptures to find out if that view is biblical. All right. St. John chapter 6, 44 says this, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day, right? Let's deal with the first half of the verse. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Is it true that nobody can come to Christ on their own? Is it true that no man uh, has the strength or power to just save himself or pull himself up uh, by his own bootstraps? Is it true that uh, you can't, um, save yourself through any effort of your own? Well, I would like to make this clear. It is true that no man can come to Christ without the help of God. God is the savior, brothers and sisters. We cannot save ourselves, right? No man saves himself. No man has the strength within this sin nature to overcome uh, the powers of darkness. We must submit to the help of God because we cannot save ourselves, right? Point number one, point number two in this verse. Notice the him who the father draws, according to this verse, he will be raised up on the last day. So some will take this to say, well, if the him is drawn, the him will be raised up. We know not all people get saved, so God must not be drawing everyone because those he draws according to St. John 6 44 those he saves those will be the ones that are raised up to the resurrection of Christ on the last day looking at this first verse at uh, face value it could clearly appear that that could be the case but one thing uh, that I encourage the saints of God to do is never isolate one verse alone it is always important that we read every single verse in the context of the chapter, in the context of the book, in the context of the whole Bible, right? When you isolate a verse, you'll get pocket doctrines that may not coincide with the totality of scripture. So let's see what Jesus said, you know, uh, just a few verses later in St. John chapter six, verse 54. Notice what he says. He says, if I can get it to go, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Wait a minute. Uses the same language he uses in St. John 6, 44. Those the Father draws will be raised up on the last day. In St. John 54, he says, those who eats the flesh and drinks the blood of Christ will have eternal life and will be raised up on the last day. If we use that logic, then we would have to say, and this verse means communion or the Lord's Supper. Uh, if you've got questions about that, I'll deal with that on another video later. But if we use that same logic, then everybody who takes the Lord's Supper has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. If we isolate a passage, we'll get a doctrine that doesn't line up with the rest of scripture. I don't believe anybody would believe simply because a person took the Lord's Supper or communion that they have eternal life alone and they'll be raised up on the last day. No, it's more to that. So it's important. Let's go before we get to chapter number six to see what Christ says. This is the biblical hermeneutics, right? You've got to read the whole book. You've got to study and I won't read the whole book today because I don't have time, right? But let's check St. John chapter 5. 
St. John chapter 5, verse 24, this was already established. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Notice, if you hear his word and believe him who sent me, which is the Father, you'll have eternal life. You will not come into judgment. Let's break that down. This is established. You want eternal life, hear the word of God. Faith cometh how, saints of God? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then once you hear, you must believe him who sent me, which is the Father, and then you'll have eternal life. Wow, so there's more to it than just, you're drawn, you're going to get up. There's more to it than that. Before he gets to that, he's already established you've got to hear and you've got to believe, right? What else does he say? Because not everybody gets saved. In St. John chapter number five, is it that they're not getting saved because they're not called? They're not drawn? God doesn't want them saved? Let's see what the scripture says. Jesus is telling the Jews at this point to search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify of me. What is Jesus saying? The scriptures are testifying of me. The scriptures are part of what God uses to even draw us, the preaching of the word of God. But notice why these Jews didn't get saved. It wasn't because they weren't on some list. It was because you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. Wow. So there's more to it than drawn, being drawn and getting up on the last day, right? A person has to be willing. First, they must hear. First, they, then they'll believe. That person has to be willing because God wants to save. Notice these people could have had life. That's what Jesus said. You are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. Clearly indicated in the scriptures, but what? They were unwilling. Jesus said, no man comes to the Father, but through me. So in order to get the Father's approval, St. John chapter 14, you must come through the Son. It's just that simple. You can't get to God the Father without coming through Jesus Christ, his Son, right? So, so, so again, it's more to it than being drawn. You're getting up, right? But if we isolate that passage alone, sure, we can come up with a doctrine. Oh, but does, does that doctrine fit into the whole or the totality of scripture? I think we're finding out that there's more to it, right? Notice what, let's go back to the verse. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. But what was already established before we get here to St. John 6, was that you must hear the word. You must believe the word, right? That person is willing because if you're not willing, you won't get saved. You won't have eternal life. And then uh, by these means, the father is drawing through the scriptures that testify of him. We preach the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. That person will be raised on the last day. That's total scripture preaching, not just isolating one verse to fit my presupposition. Notice another popular verse that's used, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. But again, we've already established there's more to the story. We hear the word, we believe the word, we're willing, willing. In other words, there's a desire. You can't save yourself, don't get me wrong. It's not your desire that saves you. It is Jesus Christ who saves you. Once you come to that saving faith, he will no wise cast you out. Never isolate a verse to prove a point. You always have to read the totality of scripture, right? Notice what the scripture says further. Jesus uh, ends this chapter or ends the book actually in St. John chapter 20. He says, but these have been written. He's talking about what? The scripture. These have been written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, 
Hallelujah. I'm getting excited. The son of God and that believing you may have life in his name. These things are written that you might believe. Not there's some process that God does alone that you might believe, but these are written that you might believe. That's why Jesus says, search the scriptures because they testify of me. God is drawing us by his word. This is why the commission went forth to preach the gospel to every creature, not a selective you not just preach it to everybody because you don't know who the elect are no that person that's out there you can believe and when you believe after hearing the word you're willing in other words you have a desire to allow christ to save you you don't save yourself but allow christ to save you you will have eternal life notice what paul said to the jailer in Acts 16 as we bring this to a close Jailer was scared because he thought the prisoners escaped. And Paul said, we are all here. <laughs> Jailer coming out, understood this has to be a work of God. And he asked a very powerful question. And hopefully, if you're not saved tonight, you're asking the same question. What must I do to be saved? And Apostle Paul is very clear because salvation is serious. He didn't say, well, there's nothing you can do, Jailer. Nothing at all. No, because that's not what John said. That's not what any of the apostles said. That's not what Jesus said. What must I do to be saved? Well, you want the Father's approval. You got to believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Not just you. This same gospel <laughs> can save your household. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, it's not magic. You don't have to wait for some special process. All you have to do is believe on Jesus Christ. He will save you. He promised to do that in his word. And he is faithful to do what he has promised to do. God bless you. We appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. We pray that this would encourage you to get back in your word and study the word of God for what it says. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks a lot.